Hey folks, Pastor Josh here. Hey, we are in our batch. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a batch setting of videos today. Um, so if you see me in the same shirt, same position, it's because I'm doing videos back to back. Okay, We want to get Ephesians chapter 6 done. At least try to get it done today. <clears throat> and we are in Ephesians chapter 6. We'll be looking at um, verses... 10 through verse 21, 20, 10 through 20, so 10 verses, and it's all about the battle against evil, and this is something we really have to really think about, and before we get into this, I want to uh, give you an opportunity to understand that you are a part of this ministry, you are a very important part of it, actually. I do what I do because of you and for you. Uh, so, in in I, I want to ask you to please, if you have not yet, to like, a subscribe, and share the videos. Uh, in doing so, you become a partner in ministry with me in bringing the gospel to to farther and farther reaching than ever before. And in doing so, uh, you are you are helping this ministry get the word of God to people who maybe has never heard of it before. So, do that for me, because you are a part of it. You have a part in this. You are uh, very important to this ministry. So, with that being said, turn in your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 6. This is the last one, second to the last section in the book. We're talking about the battle against evil, and this is very important. We might take two videos to do this, um, to do this section because there is a lot here. But uh, we are going to go... <clears throat> Excuse me, I have colds going on or, or allergies or something. In verse 10, he says, Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Very strong scripture there. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For... Our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in the world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having yourself, having your waist girded with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the fiery arrows of the evil one. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit always with all kinds of prayer and supplication. To that end, be alert with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Pray for me that the, power, that the power to speak may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am the ambassador in chains, that I may speak boldly as, an, as I ought to speak. Now, there is a lot here. From verses 10 to verse verse um, 13 finally my brothers be strong in the Lord in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the end, schemes of the devil for our fight is not with flesh and blood against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness of the world in the of the world of this world and against spiritual forces of the evil in high places, in heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day, having done all to stand. What a powerful pas passage of Scripture. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. <clears throat> How are we strong in the Lord? How are we strong in the Lord? You know, he says, he says, be strong 
in the Lord with, po with the power of His might. Listen, you can't have it if you don't ask for it. You can't have it if you don't access it by exercising your faith. You can't have the power of the Lord without doing those things. <coughs> Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the, of the devil. Put on the armor of God. And he goes down in after verse 13 and describes the armor of God. But we have to put it on. We have to put it on. You know, when when if you think about times of the times of uh, King Arthur, the times of of uh, all of these things, okay, Camelot, and all of those things, okay, um, they put on armor. Why? For protection. For protection. We have to put on the armor of God for protection against the enemy. He says that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of the world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. So listen, we, we fight against, we don't fight against our neighbor. Listen, we don't fight against our family members. We fight against the principalities and powers that rule this this world. We fight against those things. We don't fight against that person. We fight against what is leading them, what is what is drawing them, what is guiding them. That's what we're fighting against. So never take it personal. We're not fighting against our our our, our families, our friends, physically, them physically, but we're fighting against the things that are drawing them and leading them and guiding them. If it's not God, it's the principalities against powers and against rulers of darkness in the world and against spiritual forces evil in the heavenly places. Listen, there's good people in, 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 this, in this world, in this county, believers and unbelievers, there's good people. But what is it that's drawing you? You know, you might be a good person, but what's drawing you? What's beckoning your heart? Is it God? Or is it something else? Or someone else? When I say someone else, I say, yeah, I'm meaning the enemy. Is it the enemy drawing you? Is it the enemy drawing you and beckoning your heart? I hope it's not. I hope it's God. I hope God is... is is drawing you and beckoning you and that's my prayer but is it is it God or is it something else someone else we have to really get that into our heart get that into our mind get that into our soul that we are part of who we allow to beckon us you understand that the the the, the thing or person or principality that we allow to lead and guide us and draw us is who we're a slave to. So if you are a slave to God, He is the one drawing you, beckoning you, making your life better. If you're a slave to the enemy, He's the one beckoning you. And that's what people need to fight against, not each other. Listen. Listen. We fight against a physical form because we can see it. We fight against... A person because we can see that person but the but the war is in the spiritual the war is in the spiritual listen we are fighting against principalities and powers and that doesn't take physical means to fight them that takes spiritual means which means prayer fasting and those kinds of things you want to see change in your life pray and fast you want to see family members changed Workmates changed, friends changed for the better, for God, pray and fast. Pray and fast. Because you're not fighting against them, you're fighting against the things that are leading and guiding them. And those things can only be dealt with in the spiritual realm. Now, <clears throat> let's look here. <clears throat> he say now he's going to go describing the armor of God. 
verse 13, he says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done all to stand. Have done, have done all to stand. We must stand. Listen, when you're fighting a battle, you don't sit. You stand. And you're going to have things when you're fighting a battle coming at you. And you're going to have to... Is that, that's why he's describing the armor of God here. Because you're going to have things coming at you. Fiery darts. You know, I say this stuff. It sounds sounds strange. It sounds weird. But, but spiritually speaking, you're going to have attack coming against you. And you have to do all you can to stand. How do you how do you stand? How do you stay standing? The only way you're going to stay standing is a right relationship with God. That's it. That's it. It's a right relationship with God. Nothing else. We might think of ourselves, well, you know, hey, I'm pretty smart around here. I'm pretty smart. I, I know the Bible. You know the words, maybe. Okay? But do you know the presence of God? Do you know the heart of God? Do you know the will of God? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? I know people, listen, I know people who can, who can quote the Bible because they've read it and they've got good memory but their life does not show at all reflecting all at all what they read. Listen, if you are doing all to stand, you must have a right relationship with God. You must have a right relationship. You cannot do all to stand to fight this spiritual battle by just knowing the words. Listen, you're not going to get a relationship with God by only blindly knowing the words by repetition. It takes relationship takes relationship do you know God's presence do you know God's voice do you know his will can you feel him that's why I always tell people that this time with God is so very important that's why I tell people to take pay, take pen and pencil and paper and take notes and study them and pray them out and allow God to do what God wants to do in your life. Listen, if you don't know God, if you don't know God in a real way, if you just know the words of this book, and I'm, I'm being quite honest with you, if, if, if all you know is the words, I know people who said to me, well, you know, I've read the Bible front and back more than once, but their life goes contrary to what they have read they view this only as a book they don't view this as a life-giving source and that's what we have to view the Bible as a life-giving source do you know Jesus Christ in that way we have to really ask ourselves that question and if you do then you're doing all you can to stand knowing the words by themselves without anything else is not going to help you. You must know the words, but you also must know the God and Savior behind the words. You understand? You must know the God and Savior behind the words to be able to stand against these things. Like when you go into battle, if you know the battle plan, but you've never practiced and you've never trained for the battle, you'll lose you'll lose. Spending time with God, spending time in His Word, spending knowing His voice, knowing His will, knowing His ways, <clears throat> that is battle preparation. Battle preparation. And we have to have that kind of a relationship. Because if we don't, there's going to be problems. A lot of problems. So that's my challenge for you today. <clears throat> Do you know God in this way? Or do you just know the words? Think about that. Until next time, it's Pastor Josh. God bless.